Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good morning from lovely Kingston, Ontario. It is a nice and snowy morning here, and uh, we're ready to get going. Uh, welcome back to the Canadian Scrabble Classic, everybody. We're about to watch Matthew Tunnicliffe face off against Will Anderson. Yeah, good to have you on board, Jesse, uh, for this this awesome battle of the uh, top experts here. Uh, we got the Canadian Matthew Tunnicliffe, American Will Anderson, and Matthew's going to start off with Widow. That seems pretty good to me. Looks uh, pretty standard here. Got to get rid of those dubs uh, en route to a dub for him, hopefully. Uh, should be a really interesting matchup here. Uh, fun little aside for both of these guys. Uh, they are also both excellent uh, satirical writers. Uh, some of their little <laughs> stories they put up on uh, different journaling websites or on Facebook or uh, anything of that nature. They, they've got me uh, split in a gut laughing many a time. They're both very, very mm -hmm. funny. Absolutely, yeah. Both, both some of the funniest people in the game as well as some of the best players. So that's a nice, a nice dual talent there. Uh, I wish I were as funny as, as, as either of these guys, but um, yeah, so um, I, I can see, yeah, I can see Will's rack. We can see Will's rack on the left and uh, he has that uh, Zed tile and we're going to be saying Zed all yes. day today. We're on this side of the border, y'all. You're going to have to deal with it. It is a Zed. Uh, it just pains my tongue to say it the other way. I won't even say it to entertain the thought. We're going to stick to Zed today. Uh, interesting. Uh, over to Will. Yeah, I think he's uh, just okay. He's playing. This Zeta, is pretty which, standard. This is yeah, absolutely just, standard. That seems pretty good. I, I wonder if he was thinking of also playing Lays, um, which would keep his second T, but uh, would score, I think, five. No, two. Hmm, how many extra points is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would score four more points to play Lays and make L, I, and A, D. Uh, but it comes at the cost of keeping um, keeping two T's rather than an L and a T. So I think those plays are pretty close. They're close. I think the other issue potentially is in both cases, you're offering up a pretty uh, appetizing triple letter score response from the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think because of Zoe, it's a little bit easier to chalk up an extremely high score uh, by doing that sort of overlap with the triple letter score. That's one thing I'd think about. Uh, so I mean, yeah. both, but in both cases, you're going to have a pretty decent response, but I think it's just a little bit easier to give points away with the other one. Plus you keep a better lead with Zeta. So I, I understand the logic that I can certainly see there's pros and cons to both. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to see Matthew use all of his tiles here for sure. Um, at the very least he can play tongues and, and pluralize that word Zeta, um, which is a Greek letter. And we have lots of letters um in our dictionary uh of various languages we got hebrew we got greek we got english obviously um and yeah so uh and arabic I, don't forget <laughs> there's quite arabic. a few <laughs> oh really arabic like like what which, which um let me just think a cough i know that no, hang on i'm trying to think of ones that's hebrew i don't think arabic letters are are valid it's it's uh I would be actually I'd be pretty surprised. Aleph. Um Aleph is one example. I just had to think. Oh, Caliph. Okay. Alif. Interesting. Aleph. Well, Aleph is, is Hebrew, so I don't know. If I they, look they in uh, if I look in Zizaba, uh, the specific definition provided uh, is in parentheses Arabic and Arabic letter. I'm not saying it's not Hebrew. I'm just saying oh, I guess okay. arbitrarily it's listed that way as well. Cool. I don't I usually know the definitions, but it's like I swear I knew at least <laughs> one that was listed that way. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's that's an interesting thing to mention. I mean, uh, definitely both these players know what the word widow means. Uh, we did see the definition pop up on screen. Um, and both players definitely know what Zeta means. Um, but yeah, and tongues, we know tongues. But a lot of the words that we play are just words we know. We don't know what they mean. We might know their inflections. And that's all that, that matters to us uh, at the top level of Scrabble play. And it's like, um, it scores so, points. <laughs> that's basically where yeah. we're at. It's like, it's a nice word that scores points. 
Yeah, exactly. And I think, I'm not sure if we have our define bot working. Yes, we do. So in, in the Twitch chat, if there's any words you're unfamiliar with and you'd like to know their definitions, feel free to use that command. So exclamation mark define. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll pop up and it'll tell you what's good. It'll tell you what the definition is, or at least one of the definitions. And as we see tongues come down, we like that play. Um, Will's got and... a nice eight in response that's going to be coming up here. And you know he knows it. So I, I just won't tell you, Josh, so you can have a nice little look. I promise it's not oh, column nice. only, so you should know this. Yeah. Yeah, I was seeing how... Um, through the O, you can play Localite and TO Cali, Cali yep. but neither of those fit on the board. So clientele comes down very, very quickly. Uh, Will is a master uh, at knowing all of the words from two to eight letters long, and he sees them pretty much faster than anybody. Um, and yeah, he's very, he's very confidently laying down clientele. If it were me, I would have taken at least twice as long to see clients, let alone make sure there's nothing else to be played. Uh, so yeah, very nice. Uh, the score is now going to be updated. Will's going to take the lead again. And uh, ooh, that's interesting what he just drew. He's close to uh, a few things there. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to see a nice a nice score from Matthew pull, pull back into the lead. And um, yeah, I think it's just going to be a classic game between these two players, Sluggers, Slugfest. Um, both have very, very high average scores. Will Anderson's average score is 435 points. And uh, Matthew Tunnicliffe on his end uh, is sitting at a, a lowly 425, which is... Uh, nothing, Unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, nothing to... Uh, I would say nothing to... Nothing to throw tomatoes at i don't know what the expression would be there <laughs> yeah i think this one's a. I i like this play um with matthew because he's not really telegraphing anything as far as like his j there's a couple of great spots he could use it it's just he didn't quite have the right uh, complementary uh vowel or other consonant to get the easy triple letter score but he's got a pretty decent mm -hmm. chance at pulling one for one of the two spots yeah. in the next turn and yeah the last letter he he drew was the only vowel uh which i know sometimes when you're leaving yourself with a lot of consonants um it's very difficult to uh to, to to make plays because at some point you might get worried that you're not going to draw any more vowels um and yeah the last letter last letter drawn was a vowel and i'm sure matthew is like Breathes a sigh of relief there for sure. Yeah, and in this case, uh, he's got the minimum uh, jaw and gel for a really easy uh, mm -hmm. set of points in the next turn mm -hmm. since he's got yeah. those two L's. Uh, the top triple letter score spot, he hasn't got anything there. Uh, so he's just going to hope for an easy scoring play next turn. With Will's rack, it's very possible. I'm not seeing anything immediately that jumps out given how clunky it is. Yeah. Um... I think Will might have to play something just like vid and DZO or something. Um, it meets the scoring criteria, with. certainly. But uh, he might be seeing something. Yeah, okay. So two mid, two mid is 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 a better play. It actually retains the play that I just mentioned, but scores scores a lot better and covers that triple word. So uh, that seems very good as well. Nothing to say about about uh, any of the plays played so far um the we're we're, we're in the uh, semi-final bracket so four players can still win um as we see the play jesse mentioned of gel so um yeah the, the top four players there were no upsets so the four players that were higher rated coming in uh did win their series in the in the original bracket and they're now facing facing off um, in the semifinal bracket and uh, later today as well as some of tomorrow we're going to see the finals uh, with whoever wins this best of seven um, and yeah we see lixivium defined in chat yeah that's a, that's a really nice word um, but unfortunately yeah unfortunately Will's, Will's a couple letters off 
that. Yeah, he's still looking like he's in Roman numerals territory and not in playable words territory. <laughs> a little bit of difficulty there. Uh, Wavin's got some interesting suggestions uh, from the two midterm turn. Pardon me, uh, Dime or Madid. I can I can see an argument for Dime uh, for sure. I mean, Madid also scores well. Uh, I think probably a little bit easier for us knowing the J bomb was likely coming, but I can certainly mm -hmm. see those being candidate plays. I like two mid balancing a bit better. Um, I just don't think necessarily that uh, it worked out in Will's case, given we can see what his rack looks like now. Right. Yeah. This is a this is a very good Roman numeral rack for sure. <laughs> um, what's what's the highest? What? How? How? What's the number? I, I forget my Roman numerals. <laughs> Uh, so M would X... be the 1,000 uh, number, uh -huh. so you would need an M to go really high. Otherwise, um, you got the I's that can go before or after things to make it either, well, one yeah, before. Yeah, so the V is 5, four. right? V is 5, I, V would be 4, V, I, I would be 7, uh, yeah. X's would be 10, and D's eight. would be 50s. Okay, cool. So that's, I think, 68 points. <laughs> Oh, oh interesting wait, I got it play wrong? by Will. Um, oh, D is 500? Oh, my goodness. That's great. Oh, L is 50, yeah, right. I, I have mixed the two up. Thank you for the correction. I appreciate that. Unfortunately, we only use the values that are written on the tiles. But uh, Will makes a very interesting play of DV, and we call this a setup play. Um, I think, I don't know if we have a graphic for a setup, but a setup play is basically a play that's trying to set you up for, for next turn, basically. And uh, what Will has done with DV is he is able to put his uh, his X next to the I next turn, make X zero XI going downwards. Um, and that's going to be able to score points if it is not blocked by Matthew. I don't think it will be nice blocked. Rack. It is not going to be blocked because Matthew's got a very nice uh, uh, bingo in several spots that can go down mm -hmm. on this turn. It's just a question of uh, where he chooses to go. Yeah, so yeah, he um, he has the word Gorehen. So I want to mention something interesting um, about the differences between these two players. So we see Will Will has his letters in alphabetical order. That is a very standard thing that you see at the um, at the top um, at the top level. Um, we memorize we memorize words by looking them in alphabetical order. Um, so it's normal to put our racks that way, just in case we recognize a word that we have studied. Uh, but Matthew does something a little bit different. Uh, and I don't know if people have noticed what he does, but if in chat you've noticed, if, you, if in chat you've noticed, let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to see it again, I think, on the next move when he arranges his tiles. But he has a different way of recognizing patterns on his rack. Um, and he's one of the only people left, I think, left as if it's like a dying uh, art <laughs> mm -hmm. but, uh, that, that does this. And yeah, Will's going to come back with EX very nicely. That's uh, an obvious play. That's 55 points. And Matthew is definitely well ahead in this game. Uh, Will still has some fighting chances. But as we see here, D-F-N-T-A-E-E. -E. So he does arrange his letters in alphabetical order. But, but with a twist. the consonants first and the yeah. vowels second. And it's, it's whatever works for you, honestly, right, Jesse? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, as long as you can bring it back to memory uh, in whatever way. I mean, essentially, we do alphagrams nowadays because they're the most popular. But it's really doing the same thing, psychologically speaking. You're building a, a pattern recognition uh, mechanism in your brain. It's just this older way. Um, of doing consonants and vowels separately, but otherwise alphabetical, it's just fallen slightly out of favor. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. I mean, having studied psych uh, myself and memory, I can affirm that both are perfectly fine. It's just not uh, necessarily uh, the most popular way to do it anymore. It's, it is fun to see, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as we see in chat, physics is fun. Coming in uh, with the uh, with the hot take, <laughs> the first hot take of the day. Vowels first is the way. Actually, I I think I've quoted or seen Matthew Tunnicliffe say the complete opposite that vowels first is what's blasphemous. <laughs> so that's it's very interesting. And 
I mean, if you had vowels first on Matthew's rack, it would almost be in alphabetical order. You'd have that D uh, that comes before the E, because I, I know how to recite the alphabet, Jesse, <laughs> even at this hour <laughs> of the day. <laughs> you know what's interesting is uh, I could... Hi, Aaron Bader, by the way. It has been some time. Uh, I actually could see an argument for vowels first. And the reason for that is at least in singing, you're technically um, a lot of the time, the way people are trained is to quickly go from uh, vowel to vowel and then um, minimize the contact with consonants as much as possible. So at least in a, uh, in a sound sense, I could go for an argument, but this is not a sound game. <laughs> so I mean, like if you're going for something like singing, then yes, I could, I could see the, uh, the stress on uh, vowels, but here, I mean, whatever works for you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Matthew had a play in mind uh, of fade, just overlapping gore hens, making three two-letter words, A, G, D, O, and E, R. Um, and he's just rethinking that. He's trying to make sure he's he's not missing anything. Um, but yeah, he's in, he's in really good shape here, I would say. And as this format allows for resignations, are you aware of this, by the way, Jesse? Um, I did not know that, but it's match play, right? So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we might see after a couple of plays if Will's, uh, Will's racks do not improve. Um, we might see, we might see res resignation, but, uh, um, so just as of now, check. there's still, what's that? Just to check, um, do we have correct scores? A few people have asked about the scores, mm -hmm. um, just yeah. to make sure, cause that so would help us figure out. <laughs> Yeah, we now just need to update the last play of Fade, and the scores will be correct. So Matthew will be ahead by a little bit over, I think, 100 um, after uh, all is said and done. Yeah, 101 is the number. And uh, Will's sitting on some very vowel-heavy stuff, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything more to, that way. to do here. It's uh, He's going to have to try and find some sort of way of getting rid of some vowels. Um, and he's going to want to play a bingo as soon as possible because, yeah, being being behind by 100 never feels good um, because a on average, a bingo play scores 50 plus the value of your play, something like 70 or 80 points. So if you're down by 100, you know that a regular, regular bingo isn't even going to bring you ahead. Uh, but yes, this is the semifinal, Sirulitic. Welcome in here. Um, the other semifinal is being played by David Koenig uh, and Jason Keller. And we'll probably get to see uh, at least at least one of those games uh, between them. But we're starting off with two games between these two sluggers here. Um, and uh, it's a best of seven. So there's going to be at a minimum four games played in the, in the series. But yeah, resignations are permitted. Um, if the game, if the series ends in a tie, so three and a half games to three and a half games, that would require uh, one of the games to actually be tied, uh, both players finishing with the exact same score, somewhat of a rarity in Scrabble. If that does occur, there will be a, uh, an Armageddon style uh, finals match of five minutes per side, which doesn't wow. count for rating, um, but it does, does count for who wins series so very exciting stuff uh pretty much never before seen in north america and uh yeah i think i think it's been very enjoyable honestly to to watch this format in action let's see um the chat perfect yeah. so there are loser brackets all eight players are um are playing the entirety of the tournament um and so the Constellation Bracket is being played between Heidi Robertson, Jason Ubica, Sean Abassi, and Noah Sladkoff at the moment. So Uridia, very nice play by Will. He's able to shed three of his five vowels uh, and score a nice score of, uh, let me try to count that really quick. I think it's 28. <laughs> um, and yeah, Will gets the cue as uh as penance here but i think i think the cue in this position isn't terrible but it is going to uh continue to slow him down i think 
Uh, There's one time. obvious scoring spot at the moment, but whether that mm -hmm. stays uh, remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, Matthew definitely has a host of options available to him um, in this position. But uh, not really sure what I would do. Like maybe Bop and BI. Um, maybe I'm missing something. Something like Pet or Pen making up RE. Uh, and WEN or WET, those look like decent options. What Matthew wants to do here is uh, just continue to put on the scoring pressure. And potentially at the same time, he wants to... Uh, oh, yeah, this is... Yeah, this makes sense. Pintos. Um, hitting two double word scores, scoring a boatload of points, and uh, taking away opportunities from Will. Yeah, that, that looks very, very good. And yeah, we uh, we took your feedback from yesterday, everybody. Um, and so now we do have a, uh, a little scene here with a, a larger board. Uh, we were aware that uh, people might have been having a little bit of trouble reading the board uh, in yesterday's matches if they had a screen that was on the smaller side. So um, here we have here we have another another little scene with a, a larger board. So hopefully you guys are are happy with that. Um, and yeah, I can see I can see everything very well. Everything looks good. Um, but if there are any any issues that you guys have, any any feedback, feel free to post in the Twitch chat, um, and we'll do our best to accommodate what everyone wants. So while Will figures out what to do with his rack, I have a fun little bit of. Uh... Trivia for you, Josh, involving Matthew's mm. rack. There's a awesome. there's an eight that's a little bit more common, and it actually describes my life <laughs> fairly well. Um, but there is another eight in here. Uh, I will say that it is Collins only, uh, but it's okay. an interesting um, eight as well. That's uh, kind of in the same family of words. That's the that's the best uh, hint I can give you. But I'll let you have fun with that one. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Um, so I do see the uh, the eight that I definitely know that applies to uh, a flight attendant. Uh, if anyone else in chat sees, oh, very close, Dustin. Yeah, very close. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. So you're saying neither of them play, right? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the other eight letter word. Down. Yeah, the other eight letter word can be anything, to be perfectly honest. But uh, yeah. I'll be looking forward to when you when you reveal the secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see uh, Aaron Bader got it. And Aaron, it is fair of me to say it's the same family of words, right? Because I'm trying not to give too much away other than saying it's, I mean, you can kind of, you can come up with it. It's not like it's a really abstract Maori word or anything like that. Uh, but it is a Collins only word. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely just start start spouting words here. Arrow burn. Air. <laughs> um, <laughs> anything anything like that but uh i'll let i'll let the experts figure it out like physics <laughs> um who yeah is one of the best anagram solvers we have in our community um and if you're unfamiliar with the terminology we're using if you have any questions about what we're saying uh feel free to let us know obviously there are a bunch of little uh little widgets that we have um, I think we might have one about anagrams, uh, and we might not, but anagrams are basically a word that uses the same letters as another word. Um, and so that is the, uh, that is, that is what we're talking about when we talk about an anagram. Um, and yeah, we don't have, we don't have one for anagrams, but, uh, future, future events will, we'll try to have as many, uh, information tidbits for you guys as possible as Will contemplates his life decisions and his rack. <laughs> I was going to say, were you about to say Will is contemplating his existence? Because that's like going super existential, <laughs> you know, just, just as uh, his play here, I think. <laughs> oh, my gosh. OK, so um, I guess so yesterday, Jesse, something really, uh, really hilarious happened. Uh, people were commenting about Jason Keller's orange water bottle. Oh, um, and they said it. Uh, someone said they thought it looked like he was drinking mustard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's coming back to us. Dustin was with us yesterday. Uh, Dustin, funnily enough, in Twitch chat is is orange. So 
maybe he's the one that has the mustard from. <laughs> he's all right. But, um, he's going as more of like um, an Auburn for me. So perhaps the mustard has okay. gone a bit uh, spoiled, at least on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have the info panel to explain who is Zoe? Oh, I oh, assume that cool. is a reference to Travel Go. I think so, yeah. Uh, Zoe being the, the Scrabble uh, computer, but um, I don't think we know the identity of uh, of our friend Zoe. Oh my God! Look at this. <laughs> we got the still frame again. <laughs> They're just for you, Dustin. We Amazing. have the photo of said water bottle. Um, Brought to you by Britta. This is like the time for the uh, the product placement in between plays. Yeah, I know. I think uh, we're gonna need some sponsorship from Britta, right? We're going to continue I mean, to show I can that just say this broadcast is brought to you by Hotel Room Starbucks Coffee. I have here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Man, the product placement is real. I really thought that was like, that was so 10 years ago. You remember those music videos that just like had the product placement just absolutely everywhere at all times? And it wasn't even like, it wasn't even subtle at all. It was just like uh, the camera shot would change and the only time it wouldn't switch in like uh, half a second would be, oh, here is the very large bottle of Coke as they slowly pick it up and start drinking it. Or uh, they have, you know, X uh, luxury vehicle or whatever. Uh, yeah, I recall. Now music videos, it's like, what are those again? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Will, interestingly, is looking at the play of Umiak from the U of Uredia, which should be an extremely aggressive uh, and dangerous play to make, but he does go with the more standard play of QI. I think he was thinking about Umiak simply because he's behind by over 100 points and basically has to hope for um, a small miracle to come back into this game at this point. Uh, so a play like Umiak is definitely something you want to consider because it creates a huge opening uh, on the second to bottom row where you can put an S to make Umiaks and make a whole nother word. Um, so that was, yeah, that was a, an interesting thing to look at. I'm not actually convinced that it's wrong, um, but QI, QI does seem very standard. I think uh, one of the things he's thinking about is uh, Matthew for sure doesn't have an S after his play because Stepson is just one of several options he could have played otherwise. So Will can mm. definitely uh, peg uh, the idea that he doesn't have uh, an S left over. Of course, it's possible right. to draw one after making a play with six tiles. So mm -hmm. there's probably that whole uh, balancing factor because that's the second of the four S's and then one blank's been played. So it's not like it's uh, highly probable that he has an S, but drawing six tiles is still quite a few. Um, yeah, so it, I right, think that's, that QI is a bit safer. That's an interesting thing to mention too, yeah, because um, as Scrabble is not a full information game, you don't know what your opponent has on the rack until the game is over. Um, it's It's very important at the higher levels to use all the information that you can get and gather from previous plays to make a more informed decision on what to do. And in general, uh, the, the S being the second best tile in the game of Scrabble, uh, people tend to keep it um, a lot more than other tiles. So at a normal period in a game without any other information, someone is more likely than average to have an S. Whereas after a play like Pinto's, which again, you mentioned that uh, if Matthew had a second S as his seventh tile, he would have had the play of stepson. Um, we then know from Will's perspective, he can then determine with almost certainty because we think that Matthew would definitely have seen the word stepson. It's possible to miss it, but at this level, uh, unlikely. Uh, Will can be sure or pretty sure, as sure as you can get in a not full information game that Matthew doesn't have the S tile and that it's more likely uh, for Will to be able to draw it. Although he's still less likely to draw it after playing four tiles to six tiles. As we see Tabor come down, which is just, uh, I understand the decision there. Um, 
Matthew just wants to cover triple word scores and score points uh, so that he can uh, he can just outscore Will. Uh, Will's going to yeah. need, I think, at this point, two two bingo plays to uh, to come back. And I think he's going to get one. Yeah, uh, Emirat underneath uh, QI would have been his play if Tabor had not come down, but this is going to be uh, pretty quick as the response here, I would say. Uh, before Tabor, there was actually two spots for Emirate, but uh, yeah, this made it easy because it took out both. Um, Nerd Alert, welcome back. Yes, I apologize. I didn't say bye to you before you left yesterday. So yes, I'm sorry about that. We're back here. Welcome back to Nerd Alert. And uh, yeah, it's good to have you back. Uh, Amberite comes down, so giving Will... A glimmer of hope in this in this first game of the second series. Um, and welcome to Adenik LMAO, who uh, is using the define command, which we like to see. Um, Tabor also divides the board in two. Oh yes, I love talking about I love talking about uh, what we call board dynamics and uh, board shaping. It's a uh, it's a very fun conversation to have. It's it's something that uh, the expert players in Scrabble really like to talk about. I think, uh, and everyone has slightly different ideas. I think about about this particular uh, aspect of strategy. Uh, but yeah, we could definitely Spherolytic being another very very strong um, grandmaster level player um, mentioning that yeah if. Nothing happened after Tabor. If Will was unable to use all of his tiles, uh, Matthew could then pounce on the opportunity to shut down parts of the board. But that did not happen. Uh, Matthew has an unplayable Perinia, I think. And so the game is still, still up in the air, I think. What do you think, Jesse? I think the scores are accurate. That's definitely very close. Um, I, I like, I can't see any of our remaining tiles in the bag, but just looking purely at their racks, I do, <laughs> I do like uh, how Matthew's looking at this point, given he is up on tempo and it's his turn. Uh, Will's got, uh, well, the G especially, the C not as much, but both of those are a little bit difficult uh, to have uh, together here when there's certainly no bonus options. So I would say getting rid of the the G at minimum would be ideal in the next turn. But again, that depends on the pool for the C and the rest of his rack. Yeah. So yeah, it would be good. It would be good if we could get um, an idea of what letters are remaining at this point in the game, because it's becoming uh, more and more important um, as we get to the end of the game. And, oh, we see a nice pull by Matthew. And if uh, Will is unable to make a play that blocks gel uh gels uh matthew is probably going to take this one he's looking pretty comfy there and yeah scenario that is the word zuglia very nice find there uh, that is one <laughs> of the words you learn um pretty quickly when you start playing competitive scrabble uh, it does come up very often and it's a very weird looking word but uh all of the letters in it are worth one point and there are lots of those letters um, duplicates of those letters in the tile bag. So um, that is a very important word to know and find. And uh, yeah, Matthew is definitely sitting pretty on that. We'll see if Will can somehow uh, keep the game alive. But if not, I think we might see a resignation after, after a move. Yeah, I wonder about uh, how the vowel situation is looking in the bag. Let's see, unseen oh, to Will, go. perfect. Ooh, yeah, that's not the best. Definitely a couple of clunky ones, but because yeah. I mean, obviously, it's easy for us to see from here that uh, two eyes to draw. Will's going to be thinking uh, getting something in related is not super likely. Um, Matthew's just played Nape, so Will can pin Matthew in having a pretty comfortable rack that just didn't quite play. Uh, because given the pool that he can see, it doesn't seem like he'd be playing letters that are that good, unless he also had something good. So um, 
I mean, obviously I'm looking with full vision here, but something like Jello and Cog, if you were to have enough vowels, but there's not really a lot of vowels in the bag. So he's probably going to want to, if he's using a vowel at all, uh, unload some of those consonants. So maybe, I mean, the more I look at it, it just seems unlikely he would play anything there because playing with Jello would take away one of his um, uh, options that doesn't require having a nest necessarily or a fully balanced rack, or he could play some uh, seven that maybe is less common. So it doesn't seem highly likely at the moment he'd play there. Uh, st struggling to find something he would do that doesn't block uh, one of those spots he'd like to use because outrunning uh, without a bingo seems unlikely at this point given the place he's in. Right. Yeah, and um, I would like to mention a couple of uh, interesting stats about these two players while we wait for Will to make a very tough decision. Even though he has under three minutes on the clock, he's going to have to move. Um, these two players have played in tournaments nine times um, before this this matchup, and the the score is is very very interesting. Uh, Will is eight wins to one loss against Matthew, so uh, Matthew definitely has a situation here where he knows that Will has had his number uh, virtually every time they've played in the past. Um, so with that with that in mind, uh, this would be a very uh, very key win for Matthew, not only for the series that they're playing, but also for uh, the lifetime record of things. Am I the only one that is not used to see Will losing? <laughs> no, you are not, Salem. No, you are not. Um, all right, so we see Will going to court here. Yeah, I think he's going for an eye ultimately because unseen to him, he has a chance at pulling one. But Matthew, of course, has both already. Right. Um, Matthew's shaking his head. I wonder, is is there a worry here that um, how many letters are are unseen to Matthew? Is is it uh, the bag isn't isn't going to be empty. Okay. There are four, four letters in the bag right now. I think what Matthew's worried about is if he plays scenario and will just plays a bingo, uh, he might lose the game, but that doesn't appear like it's going to happen. And we might just see, I'd see the game end. we might see them play it out here as a, uh, yeah, as Will hasn't drawn a single vowel, uh, unless you consider the Y a vowel. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, that is it, basically. You like the way Matthew puts down his tiles, filling the gaps. Yeah, that's another thing that um, varies from player to player. I mean, styles, all these things, how you arrange your letters on your rack. Um, it's really cool to get an inside look on how these players uh, do it all. Right, <laughs> right, Jesse. Mm -hmm. It's it's fascinating to me just to see the little nuances and quirks of each person. There are a couple of more stats. Um, I think just to demonstrate, because in Scrabble, obviously, anybody can win one game, but over time, things will even out, um, and you'll see the top players you would imagine um, start to play in similar fashion a lot of the time, uh, but. I would like to mention that Matthew Tunnicliffe um, has a specific style of play where he really, really, um, he, he's really good at putting his opponents in very uh, sticky situations, uh, making them think really, really hard about something. Um, maybe they have to think about whether a word is valid, whether uh, whether they need to play in this area of the board, this area of the board. He's really good at those, I think I would call them clutch situations, if you're familiar with the term from, from sports. Um, and it's really amazing how he's able to consistently do this. Even when you think the game is lost, uh, he's just able to make a play that just puts everything into question that maybe no one else would have found. And as we see Hoya the outplay for Matthew taking game one in the best of seven series 
Uh, so yeah, a good game. I really like both players played pretty much perfectly, I think, in this game. Uh, so really happy to see that. And it just went Matthew's way.